Well, maybe I just have to be logged in as Gary Brown. Wow, Prosper, you must be getting very excited. Can I share what I was Googling before? <laughs> uh, you don't want me to get embarrassed. No, that's just helping you, helping you lighten up a little bit. <laughs> get you, get you, not bad. You can't be embarrassed of past, past things. Oh, of course not. It's, um, <clears throat> it's, um, yeah, no, it's, it's been a journey, man. Since, since I got started to where I'm at right now, it's, um, it's been all learning in, in the process. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah no well that's that's what it, that's what it's all about right so i mean we've got a couple minutes to kill while we're waiting for people to join yep and while i can't i just i'm just gonna have two computers under my name then fine don't know how that's gonna go but well you're the one letting people in so you know which one to let in <laughs> let myself <laughs> in yeah 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 but it does it all on the one. Um, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> I've given up. Somehow Zoom knows that I'm trying to log in on two different computers. So Zoom is fully across that. So do you want to share with us while we wait for a couple other people who join? Because again, we should have around that 20 to 25 people joining us tonight. Um, so do you want to start off with giving us a bit of a background about yourself? <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so um, I I'm not sure what we it, won't. We don't need to record this part if you don't start the recording yet. Oh, we can record. That's fine. You can do your thing. All good. All good. Yeah. So tell us a bit about yourself, Russell. Fantastic. So I was born um, in, in in Zimbabwe. I don't know if people know where that is. In, Africa, right? In Africa, yeah. So, so pretty I'm glad much I did geography. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, pretty much, it was just uh, normal days for me uh, as an African teenager. But um, sort of my life sort of changed when I had a um, Australian teacher that came across to Africa to um, be a foreign exchange student. So they literally showed me that you can be, do and have a happier existence doing what you want, uh, working in the places that you want. And I just I just took to that. And I sort of um, uh, was asking her a lot of questions about what Australia is like and what, what can I expect? And uh, yeah, and in true Aussie fashion, when she was leaving, she did say um if ever any of you kids are going to be in uh, melbourne you should uh, ring me up and we can have a <laughs> cuppa so i didn't know that that was in jest so i took that verbatim and 14 years later i was on a flight to melbourne and um yeah ended up looking for her and we sort of caught up uh on on live tv i don't know if you saw that gary uh, with uh stefanovic yeah i did i did and what's more impressive about it is the teacher supposedly remembered you, but um, right? Yeah. Supposedly remembers you. Yeah, yeah, no, she she did. She <laughs> of of course she was taking a lot of photos, and she, um, yeah, she was dealing with a lot of kids. But somehow I sort of stood out because when she was there. I would ask a lot of questions. I just really took so much interest in learning because now I had something to look forward to and um, a whole different, you know, view on life. So, yep. because, you know, she was teaching me stuff that I wouldn't have gotten if if I just stayed in Zimbabwe. So my my whole journey now was to see if I can catch up with her and thank her for all the amazing work that she did. And little did she know that her being there in Zimbabwe actually changed the course of my life. So, yeah. you know, you never know what you're doing with people. Maybe you just meet people on the street or maybe you meet people on your way to work. You might actually change somebody's, um, you know, life just by the person you are. So that now has now become my sort of 
um, you know, not star as in whatever I do, whoever I come across, I just treat them like, um, you know, somebody who's also maybe on their journey and, you know, I just pass whatever button that I have in my hand to them. So ever since I've been doing that with, um, you know, uh, kids, I've been doing that with business people and today we're doing it with AI. So we'll see how that, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And in case anyone's missed um, some of the other webinars where I've question what's going on in your background and being very impressed with all those books. Um, what inspires you to uh, read and collect all the books in the background? So <clears throat> obviously it's got a lot to do with my background as well. I grew up with no books and now I have an opportunity to get them. And the one thing about, you've been to my office, so I'm going to show photos of you. <laughs> <laughs> in your office, being amazed. Yeah, you see, every every time I walk into my office, it's it's like two walls, right? And every time I walk into my office, it shows me information that I don't know yet, and it just humbles me that um, every book that's on there, somebody took the time and the liberty to learn enough to want to write a book about it. So it's it's just yeah, it's a remarkable thing, and it's a remarkable gift a book is, and uh, for me. I've just been learning and learning and um, yeah, as, as, as you will see with the way that I've designed my, my, my work, designed my systems, it's all just been um, finding ways to make it easier for the next person to understand. Absolutely. Well, without further ado, um, I welcome you to share with us your insights and let's, let's get underway. Fantastic. Hey, man, I, I really appreciate your this opportunity and um, with utmost love and respect to your audience and the people that are watching on the show today. Gary is uh, one of those people that are called enlightened. He might be a little bit, um, you know, humble and he just goes on with what he does. But um, yeah, his way of doing business is completely different to a lot of people that I've seen out there. So those that have an opportunity to um, be touched by his grace uh, and, you know, work with him, I would do that and take that opportunity with both hands. And, okay. And I just want to butt in a little bit. So uh, Sean and Tracy, do you reckon, um, do you reckon everywhere I go, I just magically pull out plugs for myself? I think so, Gary. It always just seems to happen, doesn't it? It always seems to happen. People <laughs> plug me. I love it. Yeah, you're already you're already here. I can see you three times on the on I the know. Side. That, so there's three of Gary's the... everywhere. Oh, oh no, no, no. That's his ego inflating now. So <laughs> <that kind of>... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't I don't understand why one of the ones that I'm logged in on a computer, I'm just got one of the clients coming shortly. Um, so she can she'll be able to watch it but I don't understand why it's got my picture displaying when I on purposely didn't log into zoom so I thought I was a smart person I'm obviously not smart and I couldn't get it to work but anyway I digress over to you Prosper fantastic all right so we're just uh, sort of taking over from um last week's um um, you know, episode with Gary, where he was talking about sales and marketing. And so today is just day two, where I wanted to not just touch upon the everyday uh, marketing, you know, you generate leads here, you identify your target market. I think that is something that has been um, overly done. I wanted us to walk away with practical tips on how to actually use artificial intelligence and the way that it's revolutionizing the way we do business and how we operate. And in that way, it actually complements what Gary has been teaching us, which is to leverage our businesses so that they can help us, um, you know, invest more and use our businesses as, um, you know, the, the, the vehicles that we so need to, um, you know, create that um, wealth that he's been teaching us to do. So if we leverage AI in our marketing efforts, businesses can actually gain a lot more valuable insights than we possibly can by ourselves right now. And we can actually start automating a lot of um, time consuming tasks, which take away 
um, you, which take us away from the work that we absolutely love. And we can start generating unique um, and uh, sort of creative content, which speaks to the right kind of audience, to the right kind of clients that will perpetuate our business. And what I will also explore is how small businesses can actually stay ahead of their competitors by using AI to um, you know, uh, optimize their marketing campaigns. And we also discuss the benefits of AI-driven uh, analytics, provide um, a hands-on example where I'm gonna ask somebody who is in attendance today to volunteer with their business and we can actually craft a, um, a strategy for them live on this program today. So that will be a little bit exciting. And I can also showcase the tools that actually allow your business to generate marketing materials on autopilot. And I'm hoping that by the end of this presentation, you will actually have a better understanding of how AI can um, maybe help your business succeed in today's uh, competitive market. So just like anything else um, in this day and age, I'm going to put out a disclaimer that I'm literally not qualified to talk about AI, although I can <laughs> drive a car. So that makes me um, a little bit closer to a person that can talk about AI, because by the time we're speaking right now, there's so many changes that are happening. And what I'm just talking about is so yesterday, because this is when I created this slides. And uh, also, I wanted us to be well versed that AI is just, um, I mean, um, usually AI generated content may actually lack the creativity and that personal touch uh, that readers value uh, in human created content. So I'm not saying it's going to be the be it and end all, but we're going to see how we can actually use it to, you know, minimize repetitive tasks. And then there's also concerns about the ethical implications of using AI in our blogging um, and our writing of content because it apparently is taking information from other people's IP. So we just want to be careful what it is that we're doing out there. But all in all, we want to be utilizing AI for what its, its best use case, which is to solve time-consuming marketing problems in the little littlest amount of time. So this is when um, I sort of uh, humble myself and say, you decide whether the information you're gonna grab from this call is gonna be useful to your business, but I'm going to try as, 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 as much as possible to literally work with what we have in the best context possible. Just so you know, AI doesn't know everything and uh, neither does Google because as of um, recently, Google has only indexed 4% of all the available information on the internet. So we are so far away from literally knowing everything there is uh, to do with AI. And the main AI I'm going to be talking about today is chat GPT, which is ba basically generative pre-trained transformer. And it's usually based on natural language processing. I'll be going through all of these things. But what you just need to know about chat GPT is you ask good questions and you get good answers. Okay. If you ask, you know, bad questions, you're not going to get the full <laughs> effect of um, chat GPT. So basically at the end of it all, you will be able to be visible uh, in your marketing, you'll be able to also have a lot more credibility. I'll show you how and increase your profitability. And the last bit is what uh, Gary would actually be excited about, because if you're obviously profitable, then, um, you know, there's there's a lot more that you can do uh, with that. OK, so um, who's here used uh, chat GPT so far? Oh, that's me. A good question, yeah. I have. You have. Is that Robbie? That's you. This is Robbie from Evo Built. What do you think of it? Grouse. I use it probably twice, three times a week. Okay. Um, can you stop? Can you stop asking it questions about how to seduce your accountant and um, and just stick to valuable business stuff? But, yeah. <laughs> but why do you think you give me so many good deals? Because it's giving me good tips. Like AI obviously works. <laughs> are, you, are you typing in there how do i ask for better deals from my account? yes how do i get cheaper deals from gary 
<laughs> Great stuff. All right. So my goal today, um, if you would allow me, um, is to sort of walk you through and learn how you can actually leverage AI in your marketing so you can stay ahead of your competitions, uh, competitors, sorry, who are also using artificial intelligence. And we're also going to discover uh, AI-driven analytics so you can actually optimize what you're currently doing with your marketing. So we're not going to be trying to um, you know, force AI to do what, what we are not already doing ourselves. We just going to ask it to enhance what we are going to be doing. And we're also going to do a, a hands-on, um, you know, uh, campaign that I'm going to try and get somebody from the audience today so we can do live online generating an end-to-end -end, uh, campaign. So you can literally see how you can, um, you know, how ha have it, um, you know, expand on what it is that you're already doing. And then we'll, we'll also look at how you can start solving time-consuming marketing problems in just a minute. You know, like maybe you've got a new product that you want to showcase, um, like what Gary was talking about last week, about get, going to market with a minimum viable product. We'll definitely create something like that. And then definitely uh, at the end of um, this uh conversation i'm going to try and see if we can generate unique marketing materials on autopilot okay now so, for me to put that all in layman's terms which i'm sure some of you will appreciate we're going to have a um you'll be able to see towards the end you'll you'll get it but we're going to build out a way of um showing how the marketing works uh like a structure diagram a diagram of how we can add different things different funnels into it happen how can it work for your business? We'll use a couple of different examples for a few different people in here. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, fantastic. Like, and what? And just, just for clarity, <laughs> Prosper, it's the same stuff that you show me all the time. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's just basically the, the meat and potatoes of it. So you might be wondering what this is. For those that are just joining in, I'm just a marketing strategist uh, and I've been working for close to 10 years now. Um, you know, successfully generating online visibility, demand, um, and profit for my clients, okay? So I consult clients to help them improve their search engine optimization, their positioning, and also strategy so that they can build a brand that they're proud of and create a lifestyle that they love. As you can see here, I've been uh, in the Australian mainstream media, and as I was talking to Gary earlier on, these are the books that I read um, last year alone. So I aim to read a minimum four hours a day. And the reason why I constantly read is just so I can get new insights, new strategies and new ways of looking at things. Some people just go for a course or some people just maybe um, see posts that are being posted on LinkedIn. I really go in and research and try and make it my own. And I'll be showing you what I've created with my own insights and things of that nature, which have actually made um, headwinds there. This is a campaign that I did with Snap uh, Fitness and I've um, been in speaking engagement. I also work with the Zimbabwean uh, diaspora um, groups to actually start spearheading entrepreneurial activities um, in and around Australia and, and Zimbabwe as well. And um, during uh, the pandemic, I actually won an award for Network of the Year using the strategies that I am using. And these are some of the clients that I have. Some of the things that I've done is I've actually driven around Australia, um, you know, just to familiarize myself with the country and everything else. And this is part of our team that I'm going to be talking about a little bit uh, later on. And um, this is what we call the Online Prosperity Blueprint, the four-step system that I use to generate the results that I get for my clients. And here is a picture of uh, me, um, Gary, Jenny, and my wife when um, uh, Gary came to visit at my house and we started uh, organizing what you guys are now experiencing, which is the, um, the Hacha way. So all of this has been uh, sort of my journey to, towards what we're working on today. And this in and of itself um, has also, um, you know, let me work with so many other different um, service providers 
to really help them grow their business with a proven process that brings hundreds of qualified leads every single week. And we do this without cold calling. We do this without cold emailing. We do this with, um, you know, proper understanding of the business and really getting to the nuts and bolts of how they work. So I literally take a holistic approach to digital marketing. So not only will you get you know, the right kind of people with the right kind of pain coming into your funnels. We also help you build trust, credibility, and uh, get potential clients. And also, we all know that building uh, relationships is the key to actually creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Okay. So in the time and um, space that I've been involved in the online uh, uh, space, I've managed to create my own uh, process, which um, I call the online prosperity method. So it's a simple system that I've developed um, by literally throwing away the stale marketer's rule book and adopting cutting edge new approach. And as you will see today, um, you know, we basically work with, um, you know, small to medium businesses to really get to the crust of why people should buy from them and why anybody should care for their existence, all right? So this system in and of itself has helped me personally to scale my business from zero to over 450 clients in just uh, six years. And I'm not counting the time pretty much after um, COVID. And I've managed to also bring together a staff of 16 people. And, um, you know, I've been able to live my dream lifestyle, like I've shown you there, travel the world and support my growing family. And the best part about the online prosperity method is that it can be adopted at any, um, into any business and into any, um, you know, uh, scale of the business. So I will be showing you exactly how it works. And, um, you see, the way this system, if it is taken, um, you know, by small to medium businesses and also then put the fuel of AI, they'll be definitely able to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So just so you understand how it works, we look at the right kind of people with the right kind of pain and give them the right product at the right time you know, with the right payoff, okay? And then pretty much after we've discovered who these people are, so you might have different niches, you might have different uh, products that you're putting out there. And um, as you will see with AI, we will definitely be able to go down to the nitty gritty of this without bogging ourselves um, with technicalities, right? And then once we've found these people, we help you engage these people with content, with blogs, with social media, and literally present to them the offers that you, you have. But obviously people are coming to the internet to get information. So if you can educate them and if you can inspire them to want more, be more and have more while you're providing value and positioning yourself as the go-to person, you, my friend, will have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So I'm not going to go through the whole process, but I will give you an opportunity to download this process uh, at the end of the presentation so that you can just have some sort of a schematic of how you can actually go about this. All right. So last week, if you were on the call and those that are going to be watching uh, the replay, Gary uh, presented a couple of uh, questions, um, you know, which basically got me thinking as in how can I take over from what Gary said? So um, Gary asked That's the question. That's a great picture there, Prosper. Thanks for that. <laughs> Ah, you know, because um, I think that's one of the the photos that you sent to me when we did the um, <laughs> the interview. Yeah, no, that is that is that is a nice photo, sure. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, so Gary asked last week, what is the minimum viable product that you want to go to market with? Okay, and um, he put down a few numbers. Um, and one of the other questions that he also asked was, are you at the stage of growing your business or are you in growth phase or are you in maintenance phase so all of those things um have a lot of, a lot to do with how you communicate with your customers how you actually sell and how you can extrapolate the most amount of revenue from your clients based on what stage you are and most of the stuff that you're going to be doing in these stages of either growing your business or maintaining your business is reaching out 
to your audience, okay? You're talking to them, you're educating them, you're getting them to know you, like you, and trust you. And we all understand that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And one of the things that Gary presented was, um, um, you know, he asked a question, if you would remember, how much should you be spending on your marketing, your branding, and your sales? And he came up with a general rule that he said 5% of your revenue um, should be put towards, um, you know, your marketing, your website, your branding, your business cards, your word of mouth, um, you know, webinars like this and things of that nature. Okay. So I'm here to say that you can literally then amplify that 5% through the use of artificial intelligence. All right. And, and how many, like as a percentage, if anyone knows what percentage are you currently spending on marketing? inside your business so again um when i displayed this last week for my stuff it was around that two uh two and a half percent of revenue over the long term so i guess again i wonder if any of you have looked at your ad spend i actually do know sal would be all over his ad spend but uh anyone else been reviewing their ad spend reviewing their marketing their branding and how much money they're contributing um allocating to that to that spend. Happy for you to type in if you're too scared to uh, talk on cam. Zero. Zero. <laughs> ah. Robbie. You're you're my accountant. You should know this. <laughs> I'll leave it at I'll leave it then. We'll continue. Zero, three percent. Um, there's a couple other people that I that I know will be spending under that five percent as well, just like I do. So, yeah. You guys um, I can't actually hear who that is. Sorry. Boss, but can you see that? Maybe that's Robbie. Robbie's TV. Yeah. Yeah, it probably is. Cool. All right. So, I mean, those are some really good numbers for those that are uh, spending some money on their uh, marketing. Sean says he's uh, 3%, which is, um, which is good. So one other question that Gary also asked was, you know, how important is branding? And, um, you know, he did mention how he did his uh, branding from uh, the previous brand to, you know, the the difference that it's made to his current business. But the one thing that he kept repeating was, are you in growth phase or are you in maintain phase? So in all those, um, you know, areas of your business, if you're growing, basically you're going to need to be reaching out to as many of your ideal clients as possible. And that means you're going to be uh, spending a fair amount on marketing. And if you're maintaining, obviously you want to, um, you know, be delivering a world-class service to your current customers so that they can pay, stay, and refer. And basically, that also involves a bit of communication. And some of that communication can literally, um, you know, be done easily through the use of um, artificial intelligence. Okay. So looking at what we now have, I'm just going to give a few um, examples of where we can start using uh, AI and how we can actually start taking advantage of it. Okay, so from the chat, I've noticed that Sao, is that how you pronounce the name? Sao is currently using GPT for things like uh, e-commerce, product descriptions, customer emails, product review analysis, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And you are actually using it for the right reasons. A lot of people are just jumping onto chat GPT and asking you to write a rap song. Well, that's, that's just wrong. I mean, when, um, you know, I remember when Google uh, Earth came in, a lot of people would go in as well and start typing their address just to see if Google can recognize their home. You know, most of the information that we want it to do for us, it hasn't gotten it, but it's, there are formulas um, in copywriting, there are formulas in writing a sales letter, there are formulas in crafting an email that they have it down pat. All right. So instead of you having to maybe expend money on um, 
um, uh, you know, unnecessary time or uh, resources trying to craft the best email, you could just really type in to chat GPT, ask the right questions and give it the right prompt and you can uh, make sure that it actually works. Okay, so um, um, I think that's Abby, uh, one of my team members yeah, posting yeah. there. And just so we're all very clear, um, I do all my social media <laughs> content abby does not do my most of the social media content i write the content she helps out with some of it but uh, i write most of it but thanks abby <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally agree gary it's 100 percent human generated content oh fantastic <laughs> yeah yeah some of some of the fights that you're having with the people at, at the cafe near your house uh <laughs> that ai wouldn't know anything about that yeah not not fights just pointing out some very um, silly decisions that people are making. Absolutely. And I also, and you know, when you get into political debates and I'm like, go Gary, because I, I don't really watch TV. So I actually learn about my surroundings based on your comments. So it, that's, that's pretty interesting there. So, so there's a few use cases that we can, um, you know, engage um, artificial intelligence, especially chat GPT. I think chat GPT is the easiest one to talk about. There are a few other examples that I'm going to be giving a little bit later on. And also, I'm also going to ask um, one member of the audience, by the time I'm done with this slide, I want to actually do a live presentation on a business that I've never seen before, never heard of before, and really walk you through how you can utilize chat GPT, um, you know, to, to um, really get the most out of your business. So I wanted to do Gary's business, but it will obviously be unfair because I've been sitting with him for quite a while. I understand what he does and how he actually does this. I want to go raw and also with love and respect, if we fail to get the right thing, at least we are trying. So this is live people um let's see how we can go so the use cases that we are going to try and uh, leverage from ai um is analytics so ai will go and scroll through all the websites that are out there to see exactly who are the people that are asking the questions uh, you know who are answering or solving the problems that you are solving who are the what are the customers asking those websites so all those insights we didn't have before okay and it really makes it super super easy for us to get the right uh, words the right questions and the actual behavior and preferences of our customers something that we never were able to do before okay and one of the things that it also does is um, you know obviously optimizing our marketing uh campaigns because it segments the customers that we have so you might have 15 or 14 different products you will see as we go in that you can start creating landing pages that speak to the right kind of person with the right message with the right offer at the right time before we used to just have maybe one um big um you know avatar of a person but now as you would understand there's you know your avatar could be a 34 year old woman but a 34 year old woman can be a mother can be a doctor can be a lawyer can be an accountant all of them have different needs have different ways of expressing their problems and now ai can really go granular on all these people. And since we can never run out of paper and we can really expand what we can do on our websites, this is a very good time for us to just run campaigns that are so specific. Somebody will actually think they, they have cameras in their office and you're watching them. Okay. So, so we this do is... sometimes have cameras in the office watching people. <laughs> <laughs> not in the bathrooms <laughs> absolutely so the analytics there and we can actually do better audience targeting um we're speaking to the right people giving them the right message at the right time and we build out our customer journeys in such a way that you know people don't see funnels all right people see um a very good user experience and we can build that out as we go and we're giving them 
um, you know, all that, uh, you know, information. And one other thing is we can also now predict um, human behavior in as much as um, when people have uh, done with this particular service or product, what will be the next logical option? So you've seen this happening with Amazon, where if you buy a book from Amazon, they automatically start bringing you the right books, the right authors, as if they automatically know. That's the use of artificial intelligence to really understand what's the next logical step. And guess what? I mean, I just sit there. Every time I buy a book, I have to walk out of my office because the next book that is presented to me is exactly the next thing that I need. And if you, you, you can imagine as small to medium businesses, if we can actually start doing that, um, you know, to reach out to our audience with the exact thing that they want at the exact same time. Do you see how Tracy took a swing of her drink there right now, right? And um, can you imagine if an email just shows up in her newsfeed saying, hey, how, how um, you know, the, here are a couple of boxes of reds, um, you know, that have just uh, been discounted, given the fact that you um, bought this two weeks ago, by now you're almost finished. So can you imagine the interactions that we can start having with our customers and segmenting those that bought Shiraz and those that bought, uh, sorry, uh, you can tell my whisk, my my wine references are, <laughs> are getting dry, but um, if we we're talking whiskey, then we would be talking about different if things. If you're all so over we, with whiskey. <laughs> so, so we increase the reach that we can possibly um, do with our customers. So I'm excited for this. I, I hope um, it, you, you can tell, but um, there's so much that we can now do that was not possible um, before. All right. So now let's do um, the hands-on campaign. Now, Robbie, can you type in um, the chat there what your business is, sir? All right. So did Robbie type in his business? Building company. Builder. Okay. Um, yes. What I want is his actual website. www. All right. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Dot Evo Built. E-V-O-B-U-I-L-T. B-U-I-L-T. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Evil build. Uh huh. Dot com. Dot au. All right. Okay. While well, that is coming through, so you craft beautiful homes, spaces to live and retreat. Established proudly, family business. This is good. Okay. So I want to see your. You've got different products, Roeville, Edithville, or oh, these are places. Okay, so that's that's cool what I have here. Um, okay, all right. Do you do any consultations there, Robbie, when your clients are starting with you? Uh, yeah, we've just set up like a active campaign style um, automation king. So it automates from new inquiry from the website it will gather their information, emails and whatnot, and then it'll put it through a bit of an analytics. And then if it passes all the questionnaire tests, it'll automatically book a triage call with me at an available date in the calendar. And then I'll have a chat with them. And if it sounds like a potential client, um, then we'll flick it across into the next stage and it will send them an invoice to do a quote for them. That'll send it off to our estimator. And then once the estimate comes back, it puts it into a document with Eva Built logos on it and sends it off to the client. And if they're happy to proceed to the next stage, I'll have another triage call with them. And that's sort of where we're at at the moment in terms of automation. Ah, fantastic. All right. So if I heard you correctly, your sorry, let me just make sure that I am not... Okay, so your process starts off with some sort of opt-in where people see something from your website and you then get them to uh, book a call for that sort of consultation, right? Yeah. So from the website, they'll fill out some general information. And if they don't give enough information, um, Automation King will prompt them to 
fill out more. So it'll send them the full questionnaire. So we get their budget, location, ideal works, blah, blah, blah. It's about 20 questions or so. And um, once they've filled it out all correctly, it'll uh, automatically send them a link to book in a call if all the questions are right. Because we're sort of trying to target everything over, say, 300,000. Um, and if it's under that, we'll refer it to another builder. Mm-hmm. And if, if it passes all the triage uh, questionnaires, then they get sent a link um, to their phone and their email and they can book in a call with me for a 15 minute um, vetting call. And then I'll just have a good chat to them. Um, and then once that's passed, then we'll send them a, I'll, I'll do it like a, it's a bit of a sales call really. And then say, look, we charge for quotes. We don't, um, we don't do free shit pretty much. Um, and then yeah, if they're, once they're agree to pay for the quote, I'll f- put them across into the next part of the pipeline and it'll send them an invoice. Um, and then that'll get shot off to our external estimator. So it's about, I think we're at like step eight so far, um, which is why I was sort of having a joke with Gary because we haven't engaged any marketing yet because you've got to get your pipeline 110% dialed before you want to go turning on the tap. Mm-hmm. For the fun. So, yeah, we're up to about. He's got they, a, uh, a grouse, uh, a grouse uh, system so far, though. Yeah, it's gone well. So, so what, what I want everyone else to be thinking about at the same time here while Prosper's filling this in, <clears throat> this, the same principle here is um, how can we apply this to your business? How can we have, you know, what, what systems and processes are in place to get the inquiries to come through? They come through the website. What next happens? Um, you know, is it emails? Is it a triage of emails that get sent off that prompt the person on the next item? And um, and yeah. Okay, so Robbie, did I um, did I nail your process right now, or did I miss a part? So let me try and explain what you say. So the website gives them an opportunity to leave their information. Are you sending a couple of emails, which are basically like the know, like, and trust, and getting them to maybe get a pre-sales call on your page, like a video, something that just helps them understand what it is that they're in for? Correct. Okay, great. I don't, I don't send any of the emails. I'll just, it's all automated. Okay, no, no. I'm just saying, does your system set it up so that you're sending all those emails? And people can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. Gary, you can see my screen? Okay, fine. Sorry. Yeah, because I get very involved when I'm doing this. Um, okay, so so from and thank you so much there, um uh Robbie for, for this illustration. This is usually exactly what a lot of people have within their business. Okay. And um this can be done for any service, any product so that you eliminate a lot of back and forth with your customers and actually create a seamless, um, you know, uh, way for them to schedule a call with you. All right. So every business should be having this, no matter what, where you have your website and some sort of bribe, which is either a checklist or some sort of a um, ebook or a video, something that introduces your clients to who you are, what it is that you do and why they should care to do that with you, okay? And then pretty much from then on, you need to start crafting, um, you know, maybe an introduction email to who you are. So know, like, and trust. What we're talking about here is scale, okay? If you, um, you know, maybe selling 14 different products and uh, you're selling, um, you know, to five different avatars, you need to create one of these for each avatar for each a product and i'll be explaining to you why this is so important because people only listen to marketing that is directed at them if you just bucket people into one um you know uh, same old bucket people might follow through and try to listen but we all have a different attention span and the reason why i wanted us to work with a live Um, account is because if I came in and did maybe my business or did Gary's business, it wouldn't actually make the same impact of hearing live on on air what exactly a business is going through and what they need to create and how ChatGPT can be used to actually 
formulate all of these things. So all of this, the landing pages, the emails, the, um, you know, the, the, the video scripts, the, also the follow-up emails, the surveys, the questions you need to ask your clients, the, um, the same emails that um, will then carry the calendar invite and all of that. All of this can be created via chat GPT. And I'm actually going to try and replicate what he has told me um, through chat GPT based on the information that he has. And I'm going to open a fresh page of uh, chat. I'm, I'm not going to do all of it, but I'm going to try to do as much as possible, um, you know, just so you can see um, what I mean. So established in that, 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 that. Okay. All right, so I've just copied part of what's on there, there, and then I'm gonna go into chat GPT and say, uh, can you tell me how to market this? All right, so it's gonna start with general stuff, which is, telling you to identify the target market. Uh, it's gonna go develop a strong brand identity. Um, and then we're gonna try and now use personal information, all right? It might just take a while, but while that is happening, all right, so. Um, do you have any testimonials on your page? Robbie, no, do you have testimonials the, uh, on your page? We're in the process of getting them filmed at the moment. Oh, okay. You don't have any written ones? No. Okay. All right. So, so basically, we've been given information on, first of all, how to market this business, all right? Now we want to write a, a landing page for an ebook. all right? And then we can then say, for high end clients can you give an e all right surely the answer is no but let's find out <laughs> Okay, so it's gonna give us the topics that we need to write. So each and every one of these can be a topic that we can actually start using to write. Okay, so while it's writing, uh, I feel like I've been uh, doing my life all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So those are the emails that we spoke about. So it's going to give us three, introducing um, your company and services. So I'm not actually putting in all the stuff that is um, personal, but as we go granular into this, it will actually start creating all of this for us. All right. Um, and it's only doing it for number one, which is define your target. Um, is that, yes, for oh no, the ultimate guide to luxury home renovations. OK, so all of these stuff is being built out for us. When you create that landing page, it's also going to write the ebook for you. Obviously, you're going to have to go in and then inject it with your own personal information. The three letters that I spoke about earlier on. So I know when I was starting to talk about this, people were saying, ah, that's a lot of work and everything else. But as you can see, this is actually being built out for us. My favorite one is this one here, the video here, um, where you are introducing the, the company, all right? So can you script the introduction? 
video. Okay. So you also, one other thing that you need to be doing with ChatGPT is you maintain the same chat so that it actually starts working um, with the information and really makes it super, super, super specific, all right? So right now there is the introduction video where you can literally copy that and actually start, um, you know, speaking it to, um, you know, in front of your camera or whatever you're going to be doing, um, you know, in order for you to build this out. So right now, as we are going through, um, this one is a survey, right? Um, I'm going to ask chat GPT. Do, um, sorry. Yeah. Robbie, do you mind doing a, doing a favor for me? Um, do you mind reading out the voiceover? I've actually already got my pants off, Gary, so. I said reading it out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, like in the voice ever. This so one here. Yeah. Welcome to Evo Builder, proudly owned family business dedicated to delivering beautiful, innovative, bespoke homes to clients in the Melbourne CBD to Mornington Peninsula area. Established in 2017. Established in 2017, our team of expert builders, designers, and project managers work closely with clients to bring their vision to life and create their home of their dreams. At Evo Built, we specialize in high-end home renovations and extensions, offering a full range of services from initial design and planning to final construction and finishing. Our commitment to quality, craftsmanship, attention to detail and personalized customer service has earned us a reputation as one of the leading luxury home builders in the Melbourne area. Whether you're looking to renovate your existing home or create a custom luxury home from scratch, Evo Built is here to help bring your ideas to life. Contact us today to schedule a consultation and see how we can help you create the home of your dreams. Would you would you present your business like this? Yeah, definitely. That's that's oh, really? exactly what we've pretty much done in the videos that we're recording. So it's pretty smart. Yeah. What about what do, what do you guys reckon? Um, the people on here that know Robbie and Dean, do you reckon that sounds like his organisation? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. I think so as well. Is that Dean? What no. was that? <laughs> there you go. Who's Patrick Oster? He thinks 100%. I don't know that guy at all. <laughs> you don't know. Um, <laughs> and again, anyone who's watching this on a recording that you know Robbie or Dean, <laughs> comment on the Facebook page <laughs> if you believe it does look or sound like their organisation. <laughs> I've actually used... Um, Another good one for chat GPT is like quality control lists as well. So like anything for the boys on site, I'll just go into chat GPT and just write, give me a 40 point dot list for a pre-plaster checklist and it'll type it out and you just scan over it and give it to them. It's actually an incredible program. Fantastic. All right. So there was a question in there as well. Uh, TM, who's TM? Ah, Tracy Morrison. So if you're wanting to write emails and blogs EDC, does it have templates that you pre-fill and use uh, that speaks to your brand voice, uh, sounds like us and not just information, e.g. Um, ours is happy, helpful, honest. Yes, you can tell it. Um, can you write a LinkedIn post? 2,500 uh characters introducing this business make it what is it tracy happy happy helpful honest sorry my typing is Also, one of the tips for if you are doing that, Tracy, is like what Prosper was doing before. If you if you start the chat and you copy and paste some of your company bio in there, so it sort of gets to know your company and it uses your language, mm. then it can, it can actually predict how you want to speak about things like that. See how it's using my Evo built in 2017 and stuff? Yeah. 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 So, so did you see your stuff? Yeah. I went in and I copied that. And the best part is when you've got testimonials, 
testimonials are the best um, because that's your customer's language and message. So if you can actually go in and copy and paste a testimonial and say, how can I attract more clients that speak like this? It will definitely reverse engineer it for you. And this is a LinkedIn post that introduce, introduces Evil Built in a happy, helpful, and honest way. Um, my favorite prompt is make it heartfelt. The reason why it does that, it then invokes um, personality into it, right? Because right now it's just giving us all of those uh, dry uh, prompts. But if you keep going on and then and then you say, okay, tell tell me this in first person, make it funnier, tell it like a story, write it like a sales letter, um, you know, give me how I would explain this to a four-year-old, give me how I would explain this to my own grandmother. It, it just really goes to town with it. And um, so based on, I mean, obviously I'm just being mindful of time and everything else, but that's, that's what we have um, ladies and gentlemen, we've crafted a, um, obviously a marketing plan and a strategy, and now we're filling in the gaps using the technology that we um, have. And it's just a matter of us really understanding who our target audience is, what is it that they are, they want to ask us. And all that information is already there, if you really look at it, um, you know, based on what ChatGPT has already um, brought, um, you know, for us there. So does anyone have any questions on this part um, before I take it over to the next uh, segments? Just if you've got any sort of questions around this, because I know it was a little bit too much to see, or has, you know, you know, if it makes you see this in a sort of different um, light, because with ChatGPT, you're now creating and managing marketing materials that will take away uh, all those, you know, time consuming tasks, you know what I mean? And um, you can start generating graphics, videos, social media posts, um, you're literally saving time and resources, and it, it can actually stretch your 5% budget that um, Gary wants you to spend. Um, and there are also, you know, other, other ways of doing this. This particular slide um, has been created by uh, Canva and the chat GP, I mean, the, um, what do you call the, um, the AI section of, um, you know, Canva is the one that I used for this. Um, just so that we can, you know, you know, utilize it in its truest form. Okay. So what sort of ideas would you have, um, you know, that you're going to start using chat GPT moving forward based on the information that you now have now? Just maybe if you can put that in the chat there, because as you can see, the benefits of chat GPT, you increase your efficiency. You start automating many of the processes that are involved in the content creation and promotion of your business, whether you're in the growth phase or you are in the, um, um, you know, maintenance phase, you're still going to need to be communicating with your customers so that you leverage, um, you know, the relationship that you're creating with them. You also improve the quality of the content that you're putting out there. Um, you know, all AI tools can literally start helping you create so much content that is relevant and is actually going to um, get the customer to read. And you also increase your efficiency. Can you imagine? I did not, I don't know, Robbie, did I speak to you before this, this call? We literally just jumped on as, as you were speaking, I was creating, all right? So can you imagine if you're really sitting down with your business, you identify your target market. Robbie, you wanted to answer, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. I, um... Yeah, I've I've never seen you before in my life. Fantastic. All right. So so you can imagine you've been with your business. Now is a time for you to really sit down, um, you know, and look at how you've been doing your business and how you can leverage it. You know, you 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 clarify your message. If you've got different avatars, you start really going deeper with one type of person, give them one offer, and you know that the internet is there to back you up. Uh, and ChatGPT and other tools will be there 
to sort of back you up and you know you're doing it with precision and you're not going to be doing a lot of repetitive um, tasks, uh, you know, and what that will do is it opens you up to customers that you never knew existed, to, to markets that you never knew you could serve just because it was going to be difficult to sit down with a branding consultant or a marketing consultant to actually help you with all that, um, you know, sort of information there. And this can actually lead to increased engagement and more loyal following because you're speaking their language, especially if you take a testimonial and you reverse engineer it. And you can actually start increasing your reach um, you know, to a wider audience with the same offer, but you're presenting it in different ways, in different formats to other people. And I know Gary is probably thinking, wait a minute, there's a glitch in the match. What, what just what just happened? <laughs> Did someone not download the, the language back from my computer or something? The translation. Yeah. All right. So, so basically what I just did and what I just um, showed you is I could be speaking to you right now, but I could also speak a different language. So our customers are probably, you are probably saying something, but they're not understanding you. But with the use of um, this, you can start brainstorming a lot more uh, products that you can put to market and you can kill them if they're not going to work. If they work, you can actually amplify them and um, add them to your repertoire. You can actually start explaining terms or a bit of logic that a few people don't um, utilize. Um, so in the chat there, just so I can see if everyone is on board, are you going to be, um, you know, taking this uh, on board and literally start creating the landing pages, summarizing a lot of books, videos, ads, email sequences, creating many sales pages for your company and really showcasing how you can help your clients by actually helping them, okay? Um, and and uh, one thing to consider yeah. is I've used this before when I was thinking about, I got blocked on uh, one of the TV episodes I had to do, I got blocked on where to start with my content creation. So then I asked a couple of questions and it gave me a list of things. And then straight away, I knew how to adapt those lists of the list of items that I got to be more powerful or to be more useful for what I was trying to do. So it can help you make some really cool lists that you can then take and then bring your own content into it. Fantastic. The one thing about um, ChatGPT is if you ask the right questions, you get the right answers, okay? So garbage in, garbage out. If you ask, um, you know, uh, or if you tell it, you know, you know, information that is irrelevant or whatever it is, it just spits out what you have you know, input it into it. So like I promised earlier on, I do have um, a process and a way that I walk my clients through, um, you know, especially when they are creating landing pages. So they get the right people, how to engage them, what to say, and the actual branding. If you take that, um, you know, blueprint and really start, um, you know, looking at who are the people that need this, can you give me five different varieties or, or, you know, ways for me to reach out to these people. How can I really explain to them? How can I really engage them? Um, you know, you will find that chat GPT will be your ally. And that is the methodology that I was talking about that I promise you can get. You can scan that QR code if you so wish, download your own copy and you will be, um, you know, on your way to be creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So like I said in the disclaimer, I'm not uh, qualified to speak on AI. I'm just qualified to speak on my use case and how I'm utilizing it. So if this doesn't relate to how you think it needs to be used, obviously just take it with um, your, um, your own uh, prerogative. I really, really appreciate um, your patience. I really appreciate Gary um, for trusting me uh, to come and have a chat with you guys and I've been following through I don't know if you've noticed uh, all the other um, episodes and Gary has been laying down a lot of value um, when I came to this show today I did tell Gary um, so I don't know if I'm ever gonna um, um, you know top what you have been creating and you are giving a lot of value to your audience so if I um, did anything today 
Um, I just hope you now have a, a bit of a way on how you can utilize chat GPT in order to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So if there's any questions, yes, I, I might just maybe take uh, a couple and um, yeah, I'm just being mindful of time because. Right. So what, what I want everyone to do um, well, think about over the next you know, couple of days, week or so is think about, you know, how easy was it then for us to map out the sequence of acquiring a new customer? Um, so there's lots of people in here that do that or have systems or processes or don't have systems and processes for that. And then think about how we can use or how we can um, use ChatGPT or how we can use some form of AI to help us build it because it's a lot simpler nowadays than it was you know 12 months ago 24 months ago and it's a lot more cost effective to um, build a minimum viable product in a way that we can start getting some real value um, value from it at the start and then we can build it out as we go with the different branding different marketing um, and spend more money later but a good way to start off with Gary um, Prosper thank you for that that was really good is it a subscription? Uh, product chat gpt so so the one that i was actually using today is the free version um the reason why i was using the free version is some people might need to you know test the waters first before they go on to the uh, paid version so it's now going up to chat gpt4 the one the version i was using is chat gpt3 uh and that's actually a, a free version so you can literally lo um, log in and uh connect and just start playing with it until it gives you the right uh, information. And there's another one um, that I've just heard about recently as well called Jasper AI. So is there, do you know that one? And is there a like a huge benefit in the chat G, what is it? GTP, GPT. Okay. So what, what, what does Jasper do in your understanding? It's an artificial intelligent um, system mm -hmm. as well. But um, it's just, I think it's just a different, a different platform. Okay. So it's a AI copywriter. Okay. So basically most of these AIs have an API from the actual chat GPT. All right. They have just maybe made it easier, um, you know, with the prompts because you have to prompt um, chat GPT. So there's a lot of work that needs to go in for you to actually get the right information. So what a lot of companies have done, especially people like Jasper, they have gone in and already created the prompts within the platform. So I can see what you're doing, what, 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 what this does. It creates amazing uh, captions. It creates amazing video scripts or whatever it is. So you're going into a product that already has the formulas. It, it depends on how you want to work with this um, AI. If you want it to create native content that you have um, suggested, you want to use the chat GPT version. But they, there's just by is just one of the many um, other AI platforms that have an API. Um, an API is just, a sim, a, you know, a, a line or a piece of code that grabs from the original um, uh, database. So mm -hmm. the, the reason why they would sell you this is because somebody has put a layer on the actual chat GPT, has created the prompts. Did you notice I was asking chat GPT as we were going? A lot of people wouldn't be that creative or wouldn't know what to ask. So they would want pre-defined um, or pre-created prompts. But those prompts are just, if it's a blog post, it just puts out a blog post and you have to put in most of the inputs anyway. So yeah. I would rather just go to the source. And this is a free version. I can see Jasper is, um, uh, Jasper, whoa, $40. And it, it spits out 35,000 words per month. Now with chat GPT, you have no limit to the words that you, it spits out. Mm. Um, although one chat has a maximum of 3000 words that it can write for you. So then that's a lot. You can mm -hmm. do campaigns in and out, but if you're going to be paying a subscription, yes, it's it, by all means you can go ahead, but this is just something that has been layered on the tool that I was showing you. It's probably good to, to use it to start with and get familiar with it. 
And um, I guess it also teaches you how to use the right questions, like you were saying earlier as well. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the right questions are the things that will really get you uh, going with, with chat GPT. So, so normally you just like you're, if you're driving, you know, um, you know, when you go into a car, you put the address of where you are going, right? Not the address of where you are. And then the GPS self navigates itself to, um, to where you are. All right. And then you can relax. So it's imperative, especially if you're going to be using AI to literally know exactly where you're going, what outcome are you after? And um, once you know what you want to create, it's easy for you to then course correct it as you go. Because mm -hmm. some people are waiting for chat GPT to tell them where to go. And I think that's a wrong use case for the platform. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's, yeah. it's, it's probably different because people like myself are sitting with it every single day and I'm using it on a system that's already working. So, mm -hmm. you know, you want to maybe find out what your use case would be and then ask ChatGPT to help you get there mm -hmm. or whatever AI to help you get there. But for some uh, platforms like Jasper, which is, I think, okay, there's also another content AI. They're just formulas that they have created which make it easy for you to, um, you know, utilize the, the the AI in and of itself. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Very helpful. Absolutely. Great stuff. And just one other question there, Prosper. Yes, sir. Um, before when Robbie was talking about his um, mail sequent or client journey, I think you call it, the yeah. first bit was we had three emails and then you were talking about no like and trust. So are you thinking about the first three emails that would be getting sent out to a prospective client? You're trying to build the that you're trying to build the no like trust with those three emails. Okay. So, so what I was building there is he did mention, right. That these people are straight from the website. They are probably a referral or somebody that you have just sort of um, directed to come to your website. Okay. So maybe we can maybe just go in like that and say, maybe these people are coming straight from a Facebook campaign. All right. They don't quite know who you are and they just want to know, um, you know, what it is that you do and how you can help them or are you the right provider for them? So a lot of us don't necessarily, you know, um, uh, let's say they're also coming from LinkedIn. So this is just the starting point of where I would assume most of our traffic is coming from. Uh, not necessarily people that already know us. So it will be easy for you to create that um, funnel to make it easy for people to connect with you. So you might have a network like this. All right. And that could be there like that. So, so just, just to illustrate, you might have so many different entry points where these people are coming from. It could be a Facebook campaign. You could be doing SEO. And what you want to be doing is not send people directly to your homepage because they get confused. They don't quite know who you are. They don't quite like what it is that you're talking about. So you want to just give them the right information that they came for without bogging them down with all the information. And once they are now in your keep, you start sending them the know, like, and trust emails, which you're basically saying, you know, um, directing them to a video that welcomes them, like the one that uh, Robbie was reading, um, just telling them what it is that they are sort of signing up for. What this also does, ladies and gentlemen, is it eliminates, like what Robbie was saying, some people are not the ideal customer, but they might think they are. So by the time they go through all of these sort of hoops, uh, Robbie is not going to be having people that are scheduling calls with him that are tire kickers. All right. So it saves you time. It saves you the headache of having to say no to people. The people that end up coming here, they would have gone through all this. All right. And, and, and it's not like they haven't been paying attention. If they don't click or do anything there, it dies. All right. So you want to make sure you are bringing in the right kind of people with the right kind of pain and people that you can absolutely help. Now, can you imagine in your business, 
if you are doing your campaigns or, you know, doing your SEO or whatever it is, and you end up having on your calls, the right people that exactly know who you are, exactly know what it is that you're talking about. And the call is just merely a formality. Them just getting to know who you are, or maybe Gary coming to my house to drink my whiskey, things like that. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> I still owe you some, I think. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So, so, so it eliminates a lot of back and forth. And if you build it out, it, it, you can literally like what I did today, and with full, um, you know, um, transparency, the, the the book that I created for the blueprint, it starts you on a journey with whatever it is that we're doing. You might find some of the stuff helpful. If it's not, that's fine. I'm not going to be following up with people. Only the people that click up until they read and they've understood exactly what we're doing and they eventually book and schedule a call with me. Those are the people that I sit around here and do. And the rest of the time, like I told you earlier, I'll be reading or working on client work, which is the stuff that I absolutely love. And my team is doing other things, um, you know, fulfilling our clients. So we end up just talking to the right kind of people with the right kind of pain, people that we can serve, people that already know what budgets they need to work with. And it just saves everybody a lot of time and hustle. So you could... Uh, you know, like like what um, Gary was saying, how he posts on his uh, LinkedIn or whatever it is, because each post, each, um, you know, piece of content that you are now putting out there can actually be a landing page in and of itself, stifling people from all those channels and you're just putting them through your funnels. And if they're not the right person, you might not even know they existed or they came through up until they have actually done all the things that you want done and answered all the surveys. And you can literally, um, yeah, then sit down and have a call with them. So this eliminates a lot of back and forth. And you now start working with people that completely just want to go ahead with you. Every call that you're making, you're literally closing the deal because all of that back and forth has been done automatically behind the scenes. And I think that's, you know, one of the most important parts here um, is that by the time the customer gets to Robbie in this situation. They've already paid. Uh, they've already paid for a quote. They've already gone through the funnel. They're already a buyer in a setting, um, and that's what we want to have. Uh, I know in my business, we had to filter out a lot of the consult. You know, the free consultations that I was doing because you know a lot of the times they weren't ready to buy. They weren't ready to do what we needed to do. Um, so we had to put a process in place to filter them out. Um, again, thank you very much, Prosper, for putting this on and enlightening us. I know I've learned some stuff here today. I'm hopeful that everyone else has, and I value your time and I hope everyone's enjoyed it. And I, I appreciate you, man. This platform is going to change a lot of people's lives. All the content that you've got lined up, I just wish people would keep um, showing up. And um, have you actually started charging for this? No. Are you? Still wow. Still free. Still free. <laughs> um, on, on that point, next next month we do have, um, again, some people will know Sean Tool. Sean Tool is going to come on and talk about strategic planning in just the day before my birthday. So that will be really exciting. On the 17th of May, he'll be coming in. I will be doing the week earlier. I hope I'm getting those dates right. Um, and I'm going to talk about strategic planning in a different way. I'm going to talk about it all from a numbers perspective because one of the big pitfalls that I see in business is that people have these big um, big dreams and big ideas, but they forget about the dollars that is required to achieve that. So I'm going to focus more around the dollars that are required to achieve your goals and objectives. And I'm sure Sean will talk about strategic planning as a whole. So thank you very much. I appreciate it as always. Please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, Robbie at evobill.com.au. I'm sure that he wanted everyone to know his email address for some reason. No, nah, I was actually, I wanted to see if Prosper could possibly copy and paste just the text out of his GPT so I can just have a look at some of those prompts. Would you possibly be able to email me that by any chance? Oh, the, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Let yeah, me... Just like a, even if you just copy the whole page and send it as a huge email, just so I can sort of have a look at, how you've built that algorithm to to use our generic info and 
Um, no one really wants to hear what you want to say right now, Gary. I can tell you want to try and charge me for that or something. But I am uh, absolutely going to send you an invoice in the mail because <laughs> I just counted how long this took. This took over one and a half hours because we all obviously round up times by you know twenty people. That's a lot of charge out rate to you, Robbie. But I'm absolutely. glad it was all worth it uh, <laughs> to get the information that you needed. Uh, but yes, yeah. Prosper, please, please do that. And any, again, anyone else that has any other. Um, questions for Prosper, if they reach out to me, I'll forward it on, or you can reach out to him directly because his information is on social media um, and it, on the emails that we send out. Also, there's another one, um, Aluna AI, which is another good one for anyone that wants to produce documentation. That's pretty much chat GPT for pictures, and you can pretty much tell it what to design and it'll pop out a picture for you. So mm. you can actually build pretty good um, documentation without having to design anything. You can just say, you know, like nice for the crockers, you could just put nice paint tin sitting on a rock by the beach, realistic with wind blowing in a sunset and it'll come up with this original photo. And then you match that with chat GPT and you can actually do amazing documentation with a bit of context with background and pictures and shit like that. So that's another good one to keep an eye on. What's it called, Robbie, again, please? Aluna AI, E-L-U-N-A dot AI. Thank you. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, no, there's, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually looking at it. It's it's actually not not a bad one. Um. Mm. Cool story. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. I'll leave it there. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, everyone, for participating. And thanks, everyone, for watching. No worries. Thank you. See you later.